In this video, I will explain how my subscriber got his kidney function back to 83 with simple natural interventions that YouTube doesn't want you to know about. Plus, I'll reveal the truth about stem cells and pink kidneys that's making big dialysis sweat. How do you get your GFR back to 83? Gather around. I have received a ton of interesting queries from you guys, and as usual, I will address all the best ones here. Starting with maybe the most requested one, how do you get your GFR back to 83? Here's the thing YouTube's censorship algorithm is having a meltdown. Why? I found something interesting that YouTube did. They had an important comment because one of my subscribers just did something that supposedly can't happen. Flaming Pie Herman, yes, that's his real username, and yes, it's magnificent, tried to share his story five times. His kidney function jumped back, I kid you not from 53 to 83 in just a month and a half. Guys, that's a 30-point jump. That's not improvement, that's resurrection. And that's the question I want to answer first, how did he do that? YouTube's response, delete, 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 delete. He posted the comment five times, but YouTube always took it down. Apparently, KY miracles violate community guidelines now. There's no way to know what he did to improve. However, I'm sneakier than YouTube's bots. A not so common renal diet, that works, yes, I found his comment. It was buried in my dashboard like buried treasure. We're exposing everything today supplements, diet, remedies, everything. So, here it is his actual comment. The exact routine that helped him turn things around. Let's go through it together. He wrote, first, I reduced my salt intake to 1,600 milligrams. Now, that's discipline. He really brought his sodium down to a healthy minimum. And honestly, if you're still going heavy on salt, it's time to stop. Your kidneys can't heal when they're drowning in sodium give them that peace they've been asking for. Next, he said, I took away my red meat intake, sticking with cod, salmon, chicken, and turkey. Beautiful. He's not cutting out protein entirely, just shifting to lighter, cleaner sources. Two or three eggs a week, some fish, a bit of lean poultry perfect balance. This is exactly what I recommend if your GFR is above 60 and you don't have proteinuria. I know it sounds strange, but total protein restriction is only for people whose kidney function is already severely compromised. If your kidneys still have good strength left, it's about quality and moderation especially avoiding red and processed meats. But let me be clear if your GFR has been below 60 for a while. This isn't your green light to start eating steak again. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. He added, although I did eat vegetables, I increased my intake, consuming onions, peppers, radishes, sautéed vegetables, and asparagus. I did not eat rice or pasta. However, I chose chickpea pasta to eat with the vegetables once a week which is really not pasta, it's beans. I love this. More vegetables, more color on the plate that's exactly what the kidneys thrive on. And chickpea pasta? That's a smart move. It's nutrient dense, plant based, and gentle on the body as long as your protein intake isn't restricted. And then came the part that really caught my attention. He wrote, I decided to add 1 to 2 ounces of organic cranberry juice into my last glass of water at night. Now that's brilliant. For many people, cranberry juice can be a quiet lifesaver. It helps protect the kidneys from urinary tract infections something that can easily spiral out of control when you already have CKD. UTIs are not only more common in kidney patients but the antibiotics used to treat them can be harsh on the kidneys, 
too. So yes, adding a little cranberry juice before bed can be a powerful act of prevention. Thank you, Flaming Pie Herman, for sharing your story and reminding us all that healing isn't always about doing something big sometimes it's about the small, consistent choices we make every single day. And for those of you watching who are still in stage 3A, with a GFR around 50 please, don't wait for things to get worse. Take action now, just like he did. Your kidneys are waiting for you to help them heal. Okay, next question this one comes from Yun Lukam, she asks, is berberine safe in stage 4? Thank you DR, my mom's kidneys have significantly improved since we've been following you. Oh, that's so beautiful to hear. Yunlu, thank you and please give your mom a big hug from me. You're doing an amazing job supporting her. Now, on to your question. You asked about two things vegetable magnesium stearate and berberine and whether they're safe in stage 4 CKD. Let's take them one at a time. Berberine. Berberine is a truly powerful natural compound, one of my personal favorites. It's been studied deeply and shown to support kidney protection, help manage blood sugar, improve gut health, and even assist with healthy weight. However, and this is a big however in stage 4 CKD, things get more delicate. If your mom's kidney disease is related to diabetes, she's likely already on blood sugar medication. Adding berberine can sometimes push blood sugar too low, leading to hypoglycemia. So even though berberine is safe for many, in her case, it might be risky not because it's toxic, but because it can interact. That's why I always recommend talking with her doctor before introducing it. And yes, sometimes doctors don't even know what berberine is but it's still safer to coordinate than to surprise them. My advice? Hold off on berberine for now. In stage 4, the safest path is always the best one. Now, let's talk about magnesium stearate. If you've ever taken any supplement really, almost any at all you've had magnesium stearate. It's what keeps the powders from clumping together during manufacturing. So is it dangerous? For most people, no. But in advanced CKD, magnesium can slowly build up in the blood since the kidneys can't clear it efficiently. Too much magnesium can cause symptoms like fatigue, diarrhea, or nausea. That's why I tell my patients, use high-quality supplements, ideally those made specifically for kidney patients. For example, in the supplements I created for renal biotech, I made sure to avoid magnesium stearate completely because even small things matter when your kidneys are fragile. Alright, next question from LWRD22. They ask, what is calcium carbonate? I see it in lots of food. Is it safe to eat? That's actually a great question and no, not weird at all. Calcium carbonate is both a nutrient fortifier and, Interestingly, a medication used in CKD. You'll often see it added to plant-based milks like almond or rice milk, because those don't naturally contain calcium or vitamin B12 like cow's milk does. So when you see calcium carbonate on the label, don't panic it's there to help, not harm. In fact, calcium carbonate is also used as a phosphate binder for CKD patients but in much higher doses than what's in your milk. What you do want to watch out for, though, are phosphate additives, things like phosphoric acid, sodium phosphate, or calcium phosphate. If you see those on a label, put that bottle back. Those can be dangerous for damaged kidneys. Okay my friends, here's a question I've been getting a lot lately and it's a really fascinating one. It comes from Richard Gucci, who asks, how can I get stem cell treatment for CKD? Is it real, or just another scam? Stem cells that magical phrase that's been both a beacon of hope and a magnet for scams. So, 
let's talk about it honestly. Here's the truth. We actually have some incredible case studies showing that stem cells can help certain CKD patients. For example, one 70-year-old diabetic man who was just about to start dialysis received a single stem cell infusion and his GFR jumped back to 16. That's stage 4 enough to stay off dialysis. In another report, a 58-year-old man with high blood pressure saw his GFR rise from 50 to 87 right back into the normal range. His kidney function essentially returned. So no, stem cell therapy isn't a scam. The science behind it is real and it's one of the most exciting frontiers in medicine. But, here's where we have to pause and stay grounded. Even though the stories are inspiring, we still don't have enough long-term data. There are too many variables different types of stem cells, different underlying causes of CKD, and different patient responses. What works beautifully for one person might do nothing for another. I've even had patients tell me they tried stem cell injections before meeting me and yes, some saw their GFR improve. But that's anecdotal. It's not something we can rely on just yet. And then there's the cost. We're talking $20,000 or more, out of pocket. Insurance won't cover it. So as tempting as it sounds, don't let anyone sell you a miracle. Be curious, stay informed but don't rush into something that science hasn't fully caught up with yet. Now, speaking of futuristic medicine, let's go even deeper. Something even more mind-bending than stem cell regeneration, xenotransplantation receiving a kidney from a pig. I actually got a comment about this on one of my recent videos the story of the man who received a pig kidney to save his life. The viewer asked, aren't we playing God here? What if these pig transplants spread new viruses to humans? Could this spark another pandemic? Those are powerful questions and we're going to unpack them next. Thank you for that cheerful take. Now, for those of you who don't spend your mornings refreshing medical headlines like I do this one's going to surprise you. A 67-year-old man named Mr. Andrews received a kidney from a pig yes, you heard that right and he's still alive 8 months later. 8 months. That's a record and one he should be so proud of. Because this isn't just a medical milestone it's a glimmer of hope for thousands of people waiting for transplants. It means we might be one step closer to ending those long, painful dialysis sessions. But, here's the question we have to ask, is this truly a miracle or could it be the setup for something far more dangerous? C. Animal to human organ transplants, what scientists call xenotransplantation, are still incredibly controversial. Some previous patients who received pig kidneys didn't make it. The organs meant to save them carried hidden viruses infections that came from the pigs themselves. Even though these pigs were genetically engineered to be safe, some patients still developed animal only viruses the kind that don't even exist in humans. And yes, doctors are worried. Because no one wants to risk unleashing a new kind of pathogen into the world. So, are we playing God here? Are we pushing too far? Or are we witnessing the first steps toward the end of dialysis as we know it? I don't have all the answers but I do have hope. Because eight months later, this man is still alive. No dialysis. No hospital bed. Just living. And that, to me, is proof that healing even in ways we can't yet fully explain is possible. Now, speaking of hope, let's talk about something you can do right now to help your kidneys heal. This next question comes from a user named Self Growth Habits, and yes, that name is about to become very ironic. They asked, is exercising good for stage 5 CKD patients? And apparently, all I did was heart their comment 4 years ago and never replied. Oh no! 
Somewhere out there, someone has been lying awake at night for four years thinking, should I exercise? Should I not? While my little heart emoji just sits there, mocking them. Well, I want you to know I've changed. I don't heart and run anymore. I've been clean for at least three weeks. I'm in recovery. I'm committed to answering every question now. So to squat, or not to squat? That is the question. And the answer is, yes. Absolutely, yes. Exercise is one of the most powerful tools you have against kidney disease at every stage. It helps regulate blood pressure, stabilizes blood sugar, lowers cholesterol, and boosts circulation all things your kidneys absolutely love. Even if you're in stage 5 or on dialysis, gentle movement is encouraged. Just talk to your doctor first, make sure your heart's ready, and start slow. Remember this isn't about pushing yourself to exhaustion. It's about rebuilding trust with your body. Consistency heals. Not intensity. And if you scroll back to that old video, you'll see me doing a very light workout because that's how it starts. One small step. One healing breath. One choice at a time. Alright. Let's move on to our next question. This one comes from Nelson Bura, who asks, Is the peptide L-carnosine good for CKD stage 3B? Great question, Nelson. Let's talk about what everyone seems to be obsessing over right now peptides. I actually covered one of the most hyped ones, BPC-157, in a recent video. You've probably seen it all over social media, right? It's being sold as a cure-all the magic bullet for healing just about everything. But here's the truth, BPC-157 turned out to be less of a miracle, and more like a risky shortcut even banned in competitive sports. Now, L-carnosine is a completely different story. It's not doping. It's actually a naturally occurring peptide that may have some real kidney protective benefits especially for people with diabetic CKD. There have been a few human studies real randomized controlled trials showing that L-carnosine can reduce inflammation and oxidative stress inside the kidneys. That's a big deal, because oxidative stress is one of the silent destroyers of kidney tissue. But before you go running to TikTok shop or Amazon to stock up like tech bros chasing the next AI trend let's take a deep breath. Because while the science is interesting, it's still very early. Most of these studies involved only a few dozen people, not thousands. And while some lab markers improved, GFR, creatinine, and proteinuria didn't change much. So, is L-carnosine good for your kidneys? Maybe. It might offer gentle support but it's not the miracle some influencers promise. Think of it as a small helper, not a game changer. Before adding anything new, especially if you're already juggling multiple supplements, look at that shelf and ask yourself is this really necessary? The best healing often comes from what we simplify, not what we add. That's all for today, my friends. Thank you for spending this time with me. Stay hopeful, stay curious, and as always, God bless you.